Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for Fastlane, a digital audio school done in Montpellier, France and an Ableton certified training centre. So in this series of tutorials we looked at a few tools from Max for Live. We looked at LFO, Envelope, Shaper and Drum Synths. Let's now take a look at Expression Control. In order to understand expression control and understand how it could change your workflow, we're going to use the same musical example we created in the previous tutorials of this series. Remember, we created a texture using analog. That synth is heavily modulated using envelope, LFO and shaper. Now, we also created a drum beat using the drum synth from Max for Live. And we're going to add even more movement to these sounds using expression control. You'll find it under the Max for Life tab, under the MIDI effects. There we go, it's here. That's the old one, the blue one, and the new one is yellow. It's got more to offer. Let's use the new one. So expression control is a tool that can pick up various MIDI messages, expression messages. The five expression messages we have are velocity, modulation, will, pitch band, after touch, and key tracking. Velocity, you all know it, it's how fast I trigger my MIDI notes. Now, I said how fast, it's not how hard we press the keys, it's how fast we press the keys. Your controllers are fitted with an optoelectronic module that can pick up how fast we are moving that key or that pad. So velocity is played, it's an expression mode in a MIDI expression mode, but it can also be programmed using these stalks underneath the MIDI notes. And it's usually by default attached to the loudness, the volume of your sounds. The second and third mode of expressions are modulation will and pitch bend. Pitch bend is the leftmost will on your controller that is almost always attached to the pitch of your sounds, enabling you to glide the pitch of your sound. Modulation will is that control right next to the pitch bend, another will that is usually attached to uh, parameters like filter or sync on traditional synthesizers, but we can use it to control any parameter, obviously. So these two are, again, played live, but they can also be programmed as clip envelopes. If you go to the MIDI controls here, at the top you'll find the pitch band, and here you'll find the expression. So these can be programmed or played. The aftertouch afterwards is the pressure you apply to your keys or your pad on your controller. Not all controllers can pick up and send aftertouch push does. Basically, when you hit a pad or a key, the first message that's being sent is the velocity. But if you leave your finger on that control, the pressure you will apply afterwards can be used to modulate, to move, to control any parameter we want. Finally, the key tracking, it's how high and how low you trigger on the keyboard. So it's not sent as MIDI notes, but simply on in terms of locations on the keyboard. And that can be used, obviously, on stage to add expression and movement to the sounds as we are playing. So right now I've placed expression control in front of the drum rack, which means it will pick up all the information sent to any sounds within the drum rack. So it's not as precise as I'd like it to be. Let's move it and drop it onto the hi-hat pad. And you see now it's placed in front of the hi-hat. And therefore it will receive the MIDI information related to that sound and not all the sounds in that drum rack. So to understand it, to demonstrate it, I'm going to use the map button of the velocity and apply that to a fader so we can clearly visualize the movement and understand how it works. So as I start now playing, you find that the velocity line here is showing us that it's receiving various messages. Yes, I have modulated the velocity. I've changed the velocity here underneath the hi-hats as you can see. And it obviously changes the loudness of my hi-hat sound. See, it gets louder, depending on the value of the velocity. Yeah, and that's classically what it does. But there, you can see that it's now also moving that fader. I can change how high and how low it goes. I can change the range of the movement using these two values here. So you see as I raise the minimum, the minimum now is much higher than it was. And as I lower the maximum, it doesn't go as high as it went before. I can also change the curve of the movement using linear curve or logarithmic curve using the raises and the fall values. 
it's a bit like an attack and a decay, but it's basically curving the movement, smoothing the movement for uh, even a better and greater control. So that's it. It doesn't look much, but trust me, it does a hell of a lot. So I'm going to unmap it from the actual fader, and I'm going to now use it to move and modulate the decay of my hi-hat. And that is a classic parameter to automate with the velocity. Indeed, when you're playing a drum kit, if you hit that hi-hat really gently, then it doesn't vibrate, it doesn't resonate for a long time. As I hit it harder, not only does it change the, the, the texture and the harmonics present in the sound, but it also makes it vibrate much longer. So basically, you could say that the length of my hi-hat clearly depends on the velocity and how hard I hit the hi-hat. So this is something we classically reproduce using envelopes or automations. It's quite lengthy and boring, so expression control does it much better and much quicker. Let's start now. And you can see now the decay is changing with the velocity. So as if I raise the maximum and the minimum to get the right effect, so you see now it's more open on high velocities. Let, let's even uh, give greater uh, movement here. Let's, uh, let's select that and let's give higher movement to certain notes just so you can see really clearly what's going on. I'm going to take my pen. It's much easier with the pen, I think. There you go. So I'm going to make it some really high and some really low so we can clearly hear the difference now. I'm going to give them a lower minimum. Yeah, so it's, it's quite subtle, but it should be, yeah? Um, the, the, the good thing about, the, the great thing about expression control is that I can actually choose five different velocity lines here and use that same message to move other parameters, for example, the, the pitch. So that's a lot uh, less subtle, <laughs> less subtle than it was uh, before, but I'm going to narrow now a lot that range of movement to get a very gentle change of pitch. Well, to give even more life to these hi-hats. But it doesn't stop here. I can obviously map more, like the tone. Yeah, and you can hear clearly movements in the overtones of that hi-hat now. But as I said, it doesn't stop here. Look, what I'm going to do now is actually use the velocity of my hi-hat to change the texture of my synthesizer i'm going to use another velocity line and i'm going to go and map for example the unison on my synths and you can clearly hear the changes in texture in my synthesizer and that's dictated by the hi-hats velocity yeah so it's now i can also obviously change the range if i need to so this could clearly change the way you make music altogether as you are now able to create a microcosm of, of sound. It's like every sound, all the sounds are interacting with each other, creating a, a, a strong symbiosis in your sound. So not to be overlooked, this expression control, I use it now all the time. And the example I've just shown you is something I do all the time now to give my hi-hats a bit more life. And it can be quite subtle yet, has a tremendous effect on the musical results.